I made a mistake. I know that I'm saying it to the video. Remember when I said in my PlayStation pickups that this was a dual analog? I was wrong. It is a standard dual shock. I found out playing the game. I'm going to review next. I'm actually going to review two games because they go together and I'm going to do this one first. Now, you see, Activision has been a really big game, really big into games since the late 1970s, early 80s with the Atari. But they also make really, really good sports games. Extreme sports games. Now, when I was little, I had a Nintendo 64 and a PlayStation. Now, I was about five years old in nine. No, I was four years old in '99, five in 2000. And um, I remember when I was little and I saw a commercial for the first <laughs> Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game. A very funny commercial. It was for the N64 version of the game. But um, I ended up getting it for the PlayStation when I was little, and I absolutely went crazy over the game. I loved it. To this day, I've basically had almost every Tony Hawk game with the exception of Ride and Downhill Jam. But, um, I saw each of these for a total of four bucks all together at Play and Trade. Uh, four bucks all together at Play and Trade, so I decided, what the heck, I'll pick them up. Um, I'm, of course, talking about Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. Memories, memories, memories. But, I am going to review both of them, but I'm only going to review the first one first. Remember, I don't have a memory card yet, so... I can only do so much. But, um... Now... This game came out on the... I think it first came out on the Game Boy Color and PlayStation. This game came out in... I want to say June of 99. It came out in 2000 for the Dreamcast along with Tony Hawk 2. But, um... This game's very... It's a very nice skateboarder game. Um, made by Activision and Neversoft. And I actually believe that this one was... Wait. No, it was 2, I believe, that was also developed by RuneCraft. But, um... Funny fact, I actually had a copy of this for the 64 that said Tony Hawk Skateboarding instead of Pro Skater. It was a PAL copy that worked in my NTSC, um, in my NTSC N64. It's pretty cool. Free Skate. Now, it's a lot, like, I love this game and all, and it's, it's really good. But, you know, the, the one thing I don't like about the first Tony Hawk on the PlayStation is it's not as polished as the Dreamcast version of the game. Not as polished as the Dreamcast version of the game. And you'll see when I show you. Because this game is... It, it's a fast game, but it's slow. Like, it's slowed down a lot, like... It's, it controls nice and all. And I always loved the game, but it... I actually found the N64 port to be more fluid. And that's only with a certain few games where I find it Nintendo ports better than a Sony or Microsoft port. As much as I love Nintendo. But, I mean, you know, it controls nice. But it's really sloppy. And it's it's not bad. Definitely could be better. Um, like that, when you hit the boxes, the bunch of boxes flies. Instead of just one, one like them all flying everywhere. The Dreamcast version, they fixed this. And don't even remind me of the ungodly Game Boy Color version of this game, because that wasn't... That wasn't even skateboarding, that was just sad. It really fixed it in two for both the PS1 version and the Game Boy Color version. 
but you know as you can see like it's it's really nice it plays really well but the you know it's also the reason this one costs less than two because the gameplay is good but it's it's borderline good it's not or the graphics are borderline they're not they're not really amazing toward the, to the point to where you want to like most of the people that played this didn't want to continue the series because they were afraid that the game would be the same exact game on every single console because face it you can't really you can't really originalize a skateboarding video game but they did and they made it to where there was a storyline in the Underground games, there was a storyline in the American Wasteland game, Ride, I'm pretty sure there's a storyline. If there's not, please correct me, anyone that's played it. Another thing I really dislike about this game that you doesn't have to worry about in 2 is you actually have to manually skip the track in Tony Hawk Pro Skater for this. Unlike the Game Boy, ver or this actually has licensed music, though, unlike the Game Boy version, it's a bunch of random crap. This, but you have to manually switch the tracks, and that can get very annoying after a while. Unlike 2, or the Gate, or the Dreamcast version of 1. So. Unfortunately, if I review 2 in this video, I'll run over my time limit on these. And I won't be able to complete it. And I want to do one individual video for each. So, um... Pretty basic review. Um, my verdict, unless you're a really hardcore collector, um, I would buy the Dreamcast version to play, or the N64 version. The PS1 version's good, but it's not... doesn't live up to the Dreamcast version of it. But, um... Next game, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2.